Good morning, everybody. You're listening to the Arwen Lewis radio show. Today, my very special guest is a Academy Award winning, uh, Golden Globe winning, Grammy nominated songwriter, John D. Nicola. He wrote the songs Time of My Life and Hungry Eyes with his co-writer, Frankie Previtt. And those were from the movie Dirty Dancing. And he's also a record producer, a recording artist. And we're here today featuring songs from two of his recent albums that he's released on OMED Records. And we're talking about the why because. And now we're going to move into his album, She Said. And John, um, in your bio, I took a little quote um, that you gave us to explain um, some of the philosophy behind She Said. And it says, uh, there's a narrative arc that begins with loving somebody and loving each other as humans, countered by a warning of what's happening to our planet and our country. That winds up with at least the possibility of redemption. And I totally hear that in this collection of songs. Um, this is kind of like more of a, there's a little bit more of a dreamy vibe. You cover Can't Find My Way Home by um, Steve Winwood, which is like when I first heard it, I actually thought it was the um, Steve Winwood version. You just like ghost it perfectly. Um, so yeah, maybe you could talk about, um, you know, how you came up with the songs for this particular project and uh, what your recording process was like. And I know you um, kind of, I don't know if this was a branch out for you, for you to play like a synthesizer and a sitar. Was that the first time you recorded with those instruments? Um, so yeah, let's just talk about the recording process and um, where the writing um, inspiration came from. Yeah, well, as I mentioned, the Why Because was songs I had written for other people uh, that I felt I could pull together for a record. And she said was different because it was, I started from scratch and I was writing for me, myself as an artist, which I had never done before. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was so liberating. It was so much fun because I, I didn't have to get into anybody else's head. Like what would they want to sing and what, you know, what makes sense for them. It was like it was all on me and, and I, I just loved it because there were no constraints. I could just do whatever came out. And so I probably uh, I picked up uh, my Juno 106, which is what I had originally wrote Hungry Eyes with. Okay. It has all that chimey. Dung, dung, dung. So I just it's a it's from the 70s uh, or eight, no, 70s, eight, 80s, 80s an 80s keyboard. And, uh, you know, people like um, Tame and Paula, Kevin Parker, he, he used that synth. It's, it's kind of a, a workhorse synth. And, and, you know, there's there seems to be with the indie rock bands a little bit of a uh, nod to the 80s synth pop that was going on. And so I just pulled it out and I just started going. I just started building tracks and, you know, I'd maybe a chord progression on on my on the on the Juno and then I'd think I'd sing a melody with that and then I'd put a bass part on and and uh I kind of went backwards because I I I played all the music first and then I would bring a drummer in uh Brian as you know Brian Delaney and um he would you know I maybe maybe I'd have a like your dad does, Peter, he put kind of like a drum program down and then build the tracks along around that and then pull the drummer in later. But um, I, I guess I was trying to, uh, by pulling the synth out, I, I was trying to, um, trying to a, a appeal to a, a younger I, I don't know. I try to stay contemporary, um, and 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 that's not always easy. But I, for some reason, I just felt like let me start with a synth. And so I would only I'd say only about half of the songs on that record started with synth, and the others were acoustic guitar. Say I I also wrote a song with um, Keith Reed, who sadly passed away recently. Keith was the lyricist for all of uh, Procol Harum's songs, including Whiter Shade of Pale. Um, 
And I had written with Keith before, but I asked Keith, I said, do you have some, um, you know, some lyrics? And and because uh, I mostly write music first, melody first, and then work with a lyricist mm -hmm. to listen to that track of music and melody. Uh, once in a while, I'll take a lyric and just write to that lyric. And that's how um, my song Battered Cloth came about. Um, Keith sent me the lyrics, Battered Cloth, and uh, and then it just came just came out. You know, so, a lot of the time, like, for instance, Hungry Eyes, when I wrote that, the music for it poured out in 10 minutes yeah. you know you know there are other times when you have to labor and it and it you know can't find quite the right things and and you know they end up okay they end up good but it's the ones that just spill out are are the most fun you know they just it's kind of like you're channeling something something just comes through you you know and uh and uh, that that uh, hungry eyes was like that, and battered cloth was like that. And um, so, and did you you did all the production yourself, and you recorded that in your barn too, right? So that do you feel like the your your barn studio? Um, do you feel like the ambience of that studio affected your writing style too? And also, was it all analog or was it digital too? Um, you no, know, it's. Uh, it was digital too. Uh, one of these days, the next project I'm going to do is going to be all analog. But I have a lot of a ton of analog gear, so it's going down digitally, but it's through a ton of analog, uh, you know, great old analog gear. Uh, I do take a lot of the times I'll take uh, many of the tracks after I've recorded them digitally. And run them through. You can see that. Well, you guys can see the uh, 16 track tape machine back there, um, because it gives it adds that analog sound. And the drum. I, if I listen to the drums playing back to me after being recorded digitally, they sound good. I send them to the tape machine and bring them back, and they just sound better. Yeah. You know? And. Um, the convenience, you know, you can do multiple takes with with digital and just go over and over and edit and cut this and that, uh, which you can't do on tape. You know, tape is, you know, you get three songs on a tape maybe. Yeah. Um, so there's that advantage to um, to digital. But then, uh, like I said, I run it through um, I run it through my tape machine and uh, and then I'll even mix to a two track tape machine. Oh to uh, add a little more of that um, analog vibe, which uh, I love. I, I absolutely love it. And it just sounds, it's warmer, you know, and then if you get it on vinyl, it sounds better, which um, by the way, you can get um, the Why Because, John Dean Nicola's album on vinyl, correct? And is she set yeah. on vinyl too? Yes. Yep, so they're both available on vinyl. Uh, you can visit omadrecords.com to grab those. And uh, we're going to head out to break here pretty soon. Um, but for those of you who are just tuning in, uh, this is Arwen Lewis. You're listening to the Arwen Lewis Radio Show. And my special guest is a very accomplished musician. He's been in the recording business for five decades. His name's John DiNicola. He is an Oscar-winning and Golden Globe-winning Grammy-nominated songwriter for I've Had the Time of My Life and Hungry Eyes from Dirty Dancing. And he's also a recording artist, a record label head, and a producer. And we're featuring songs from his records, The Why Because, and She Said Today. We're going to take you out to break from his song, You're the Only One, that's recorded on The Why Because, and bring you back in with Hungry Eyes. That's John DiNicola's version of Hungry Eyes. It's also on The Why Because. And we'll um, see you in a second. <laughs> 